Fastening to concrete. Designing anchoring points to concrete is a common challenge for structural engineers. Today engineers can choose from a wide range of different fasteners. This seminar will give an overview of the solutions that are available in the marketplace and provide guidelines on how to decide which fastener to use for a specific application. Part 1 of the seminar will show the solutions available for fastening and the basic technical explanation for the most common anchors. In part two, we will, be, we will go through the considerations that the designer and the builder have to make when they are choosing the fastener for their project. In this part, we will discuss safety and code compliance, compare different product types in regards to the complexity of speed and speed of installation, see how the products can cope with typical building tolerances and exposure to different environments, and talk about what cracked concrete is and how it influences the capacity of the anchors. Fasteners that are transferring tension and shear loads into concrete can be divided in two groups. Cast-in-place systems will be placed in the formwork before the concrete is poured. Post-installed systems are installed after the concrete has hardened. Cast-in-place systems are normally using headed anchors to engage with the concrete, which is the most reliable and secure method to connect to concrete. Most of the commonly used post-installed anchors are installed through drill installation. Today designers can choose from a wide range of different fasteners, also referred to as anchors. The chart gives an overview of the different types of systems available. Anchor channels, weld plates with headed anchors, threaded inserts and some special connections are available as cast-in-place systems. Cast-in-place systems are commonly used for connections of facades and elevators as the design for these parts of the building is normally finished at the time of the concrete pour allowing the fasteners to be designed and installed in time. The application for cast and anchors is limited, as all connection points need to be fully designed at the time of the concrete pour. Cast and play systems cannot be used for remedial work. Most utilities like pipes, cables and light fixings, as well as suspended ceilings, are fixed using post-installed anchors. Post-installed anchors can be subdivided in mechanical anchors, bonded anchors, also known as adhesive anchors, and screw-in anchors. Within the mechanical anchor group, there are torque-controlled expansion anchors, deformation-controlled expansion anchors, and undercut anchors. The direct-installed, post-installed systems are high-strength steel fasteners that are directly driven into concrete. This is normally done through an explosive charge or compressed air. The anchors that rely on drilled holes became commercially interesting with the development of electric drilling machines and especially with the techni technical progress in percussion drilling machines, also called hammer drill. The first electric drilling machine was developed by Arthur James Arnott and William Blanche Brain in 1889 in Melbourne. Fine developed the first electric handheld machine in 1895 in Germany. The use of concrete anchors only became efficient with the mass production of the percussion drill tools like Bosch's high frequency hammer in 1938 by Robert Bosch in Germany. The first percussion drilling machines required a high contract pressure, making the drill process very straining. In the following years, innovative machines like Hilti's TE17 with an electro-pneumatic hammering mechanism were developed. The modern machines require low contact pressure, increasing the speed of installation for post-installed anchors. The following slides give information on the different available fastener types. The first group of mechanical anchors are the torque-controlled anchors. They can easily be installed through the hole of the fixture. After the hole is drilled, air is blown in to clean and, uh, clean and the anchor is inserted. When the anchor is tightened to its installation torque, a wedge on the anchor opens and presses against the, uh, the drill hole surface. Different product types are available, some of them with European Technical Approval ETA and some with ICC Evaluation Service Reports ICC ESR. While the first products were developed around 1900, torque-controlled mechanical anchors only became commercially available with developments by Upad Wall in 1858 and later Liebig, Fischer and Hilti. Torque-controlled anchors are available in a wide range of diameters, lengths and finishes. Some of the available products are approved for cracked concrete and some are approved for uncracked concrete only. Torque-controlled expansion anchors re-expand upon the application of tension loads and access to the preload, a mechanism referred to as follow-up expansion. 
Displacement controlled anchors, also called drop-in anchors, are set by driving the expansion cone or the anchor sleeve through, the, through a defined displacement. This results in a corresponding level of expansion force. Unlike torque controlled anchors, displacement controlled expansion anchors do not generate additional expansion force upon loading. Normally a setting tool is required to install the anchor. Undercut anchors were developed to form an interlock with the concrete at the base of the drilled hole. The development started in the 1970s. The connection method is similar to the method of headed anchors. The undercut is formed either by a special drill or by the anchor itself. The install installation requires a special drill to control the drill depths. Undercut anchors are available with European Technical Approvals ETA and Evaluation Service reports by the Evaluation Service of the International Code Council ICCES. Undercut anchors are available in different diameters and finishes. Undercut anchors have the advantage over torque and displacement control anchors that they do not introduce any expansion force that can lead to splitting of the concrete. Screw anchors, also called concrete screws, are installed in holes that match the diameter of the screw shaft. The hardened threads of the screw cut into the wall of the borehole and create an interlock between the screw and the concrete over the entire length. The drill hole has to be deeper than the length of the screw to provide room for the product of the thre cut thread cutting process. The bigger diameters of screw anchors also work in applications with cracked concrete. Bond anchors are also known as chemical anchors. A wide range of bond anchors is available. They differ in type of anchor and bonding material. Bond anchors can be divided in two groups. Capsule anchor systems are delivered with a bonding material in glass capsules or foil pouches. The capsules include two or more components of a resin which are mixed together during the anchor installation and subsequently hardened. The second type are injection systems. These systems in these systems, the polymer resin is usually supplied in cartridges and is pumped into the borehole before the anchor, anchor is installed. The load transfer for all bonded anchors works through bond between the anchor and the resin and then between the resin and the concrete. The correct hole cleaning is critical for this type of anchors as any bore dust can destroy the bond that is required to transfer the loads. Bond anchors are very sensitive to workmanship. Overhead installation is particularly critical and it is important to strictly follow the manufacturer's installation instructions. Some systems work with regular threaded steel rods. Other systems use steel with special profile to optimize the bond. Some chemical anchor systems are also approved to anchor reinforcement bars in concrete. This method is used to connect new concrete pores to existing concrete members. Anchor channels are C-shaped profiles with headed anchors connected to the back of the channel. The channel is normally attached to the formwork so that the channel surface is flush with the concrete. During the concrete pour, the channel section is filled with a removable filler to prevent concrete intrusion into the channel interior. After the formwork is stripped, the filler is removed and associated headed bolts are installed in the channel to introduce loads. Anchor channels are available with hot rolled and cold form profiles. There are systems available with plain lips that will only allow loading in tension and shear in direction perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the channel. Other systems have toothed lips and toothed bolts which also transfer significant loads along the longitudinal axis of the channel. The teeth and the profile lips and the headed bolts form a positive connection to resist loads in the longitudinal direction. Anchor channels with plain lips are regulated in Europe and in the United States and can be granted an ETA. Anchor channels that hold an ETA based on a European assessment document, EAD, comply with the Australian standard AS5216. Anchor channels that can also take loads in the longitudinal direction are not regulated in Australia and Europe yet, but they are included in the ICCES acceptance criteria AC232 and can receive an evaluation service report from the International Code Council ICCESR. Weld plates, also called anchor plates, are steel-based plates equipped with headed anchors, also called headed studs. The headed anchors are welded to the one side of the plate. The weld plate is installed in the concrete with a surface flush to the concrete surface. Weld plates are commonly used to connect structural steel to concrete. 
The steer members are welded to the exposed exterior of the weld plate. After the welding process and the connection is normally painted to provide corrosion protection. Threaded inserts are available in a wide range of different shapes. They typically use a headed connection to safely transfer loads into the concrete. Threaded inserts are not covered by Australian standards, but depending on the shape of the insert, they can be designed in accordance with EN 1992-4. The threaded insert is connected to the formwork, normally using an installation aid like a plastic nail plate. After the nail plate is removed, the thread of the threaded insert is exposed at the concrete surface and allows the installation of attachments, generally through standard metric bolts. Some suppliers also offer products with non-standard threads. To suit the different applications, there is a wide range of different lengths, diameters and load capacities and finishes available. Different shapes of special cast-in anchors are available to anchor to concrete. These systems can use reinforcement steel bars. Some of these proprietary items use headed anchors bends or hooks to provide anchorage in concrete. Other systems will solely depend on bond development of the reinforcement. The designer should understand the working mechanism of the system to ensure that all possible failure modes are taken into consideration in the design. So if the system depends on the development of reinforcement bar, the capacity should be calculated based on the design method introduced in AS3600. Suppliers of proprietary systems normally provide help with the design of their system. In the second part of the seminar we will look at how designers decide which method of anchorage to use. The paramount aim is to ensure that the installed parts are safe for the entire scheduled service life. To achieve this all relevant boundary conditions are desi and design requirements must be sufficiently considered. The designer will try to find a product that provides safety. He will also try to find a solution that is described in local standards as the codes will provide guidance on the design of the anchor. The designer will be influenced by the builder to use a product that has a low price and is quick to install. Sometimes other criteria like the complexity of the installation, corrosion resistance, adjustability and behavior in cracked concrete are not considered during the design stage of the building. This can cause problems during the pro construction process and reduce the service life or even the safety of the construction. The wrong product choice can also have unforeseeable problems during the construction and installation and increase the overall cost for the project as well as delay the time schedule. The next chapter deals with the topic safety and code compliance. Connections are divided into structural and non-structural connections. Structural connections are normally defined as connections that are critical to the stability of the structure like bracings or strengthenings, while non-structural connections connect items that are non not critical to the stability of the structure like suspended ceilings and all kinds of supply lines. Usually structural connections are subject to higher safety standards compared to non-structural connections. Some asset owners, like the road authorities, ban certain kind of anchors based on the type of connection. Three steps need to be taken to ensure a fastener can be used safely. Firstly, all critical modes of failure should be taken into consideration during the design of the fastener. For common fasteners, the failure modes can be divided into failure modes concerning the steel and the failure modes concerning the surrounding concrete. There are failure modes that occur during tension loading and failure modes for shear. Anchors that are loaded in shear and tension need to be designed for combined loading. The designer should understand the failure modes related to the chosen product to be able to do a safe design. Reputable suppliers or fasteners will give detailed guidance on the design capacities of their products. The fastener should have been tested to determine the capacities for the different failure modes. A statistical evaluation of the testing should be available and the testing should cover the conditions that the fastener is used in. The anchor has to be installed by a comp competent installer with appropriate supervision and experience. Suppliers of fasteners offer installation instructions for the supplied products. The designer should be familiar with the installation of the product to understand whether the site conditions will allow the installation of the chosen fastener. 
For products that hold an ETA or ICC ESR, the approval document will show the conditions that are included in the approval. Approvals will normally have restrictions in regards to edge distance and spacing to other anchors as well as concrete capacities that are covered by the approval. If the anchors are used in conditions that differ from the approved conditions, the capacity might be, might be reduced or the anchor might not work at all. The most commonly used fasteners, such as post-installed anchors and anchor channels, are covered by Australian standard AS5216. Design of post-installed and cast-in fastenings in concrete. AS5216 was released in 2018 and replaces the technical specification SATS101. AS5216 is already referenced in the recently released concrete code AS3600, the bridge code AS5100, and is expected and it is expected that it will be referenced in the National Construction Code 2019. AS5216 provides minimum design requirements for the included products and includes information for testing and assessment of the products. For anchorage in concrete, AS5216 introduces the concrete capacity design or CCD method. The CCD method gives conservative capacities for the anchorage in concrete assuming unreinforced concrete. Reda regarding the product assessment, AS5216 refers back to the European Assessment Document EAD, for the included products. Product compliance can be demonstrated through a test report or through an ETA. ETAs are given out by independent bodies in Europe based on independent testing and audits. A valid ETA is the best way to show product compliance for anchors. The designer has to ensure that the application is within the scope of the ETA in regards to the concrete compressive strength and the edge distance. To improve the quality of anchored installations through more competent installers, the Australian Engineered Fasteners and Anchors Council, or AFAC, offers a training program that covers the installation of post-installed anchors commonly available in the Australian market. The training includes a face-to-face -face training session and a practical and written examination. Installers are trained on how to understand and follow its installation instructions, how to access site conditions and installation equipment that can influence the capacity of the anchor, and they learn proper cleaning and hole preparation techniques for the installation of post-installed anchors. Installers are issued a certified installer card. The card is initially valid for three years and needs to be renewed after every five years after this. For more information on the training and available dates, please visit the AFAC website www.afac.org.au. The next slides discuss the complexity and speed of installation for some common fastening methods. Cast-in anchors like anchor channels, threaded inserts and weld plates are very easy to install. They are fixed to the formwork before the concrete pour. It needs to be ensured that they are flush with the concrete surface. It is also important that the concrete is compacted soundly in the area around the fastener to avoid honeycombing and ensure the full capacity can be reached. The final installation of the attachment is very easy for anchor channels and threaded inserts and the only tool required is a torque controlled wrench. Weld plates require the fixing to be welded, a process that often does not meet the demand of modern construction site as it causes safety issues and slows down the overall building process. The welding will need to be done by a certified welder and should be inspected to ensure a good weld quality. Welding in the field may be difficult due to the location or environment. When specifying weld plates, the engineer should confirm that welding is allowed on the particular job site. For most anchors, including the threaded inserts, it is important that the anchor is not over torqued during the installation, as a high torque can introduce loads that exceed the anchor capacity and might damage the bolt, the anchor or the surrounding concrete. The use of torque controlled wrenches is highly recommended. Electric impact tools, so called rattle guns, can introduce very high loads and thus damage the anchor. Post-installed anchors are more sensitive to installation errors than cast-in anchors. To reach the full capacity of the anchor, the installer needs to use the right drilling method and equipment. For adhesive anchors, 
the characteristics of the borehole influences the bond strength of the anchor. In high strength concrete, the holes will often be diamond drilled, resulting in a smooth surface of the borehole and low friction between epoxy and concrete. For mechanical anchors, the correct diameter is critical, as the anchor will not develop its full capacity in, the hole, in a hole that is too big. The correct cleaning technique has a big influence on the capacity of the adhesive anchor. If the drill dust stays in the hole, it will reduce the bond strength significantly. The images show a well cleaned hole on the left side and an uncleaned hole on the right side. On the right side, the drill dust forms a layer that will prevent the bond between the anchor and the concrete and will reduce the anchor capacity significantly. Depending on the product and the site conditions, the anchor capacity of adhesive anchors can be reduced by more than 50% if the manufacturer's installation instructions are not followed correctly. The chart shows the capacity of one specific chemical anchor product for different hole cleaning methods. Even small deviations from the procedures that are shown in the manufacturer's installation instruction can lead to significant capacity reductions of the anchor. Site studies in the US and Europe have shown that in up to two thirds of all anchor applications, the installation did not follow all the steps as required according to the manufacturer's installation instructions, leaving the anchor with unknown capacity. Another important point when deciding on the right fastener is the tolerances that the fastener has to allow for. Anchors are usually used to connect items built by two different trades. When a facade is fixed to a concrete floor, the expectations on the tolerances can differ between the concrete contractor that installed the slab and the facade manufacturer who will have to connect to the slab. Compared to concrete contractors, the trades that deal with steel or aluminium like facade manufacturers and trades that will deal with mechanical equipment like elevator installers will require tighter tolerance to work with. The designer of the connection zone needs to know the required tolerance to specify the right connections and avoid clashes and delays during the construction. The anchor has to provide the adjustability to bridge the usual building tolerances between the two connected components. Different types of anchors offer diverse levels of adjustability. Post-installed anchors, in theory, offer the biggest level of adjustability in all directions, as they will be installed at the time of the connection. However, they are restricted by the reinforcement in the concrete. Threaded inserts offer no adjustability and can only be used if the attached item allows for the required adjustment or if the exact location of the connection is not relevant. Weld plates will offer adjustability in all directions, but their adjustability is limited due to the size of the plate. Anchor channels are available in different lengths and will provide unlimited adjustability in the direction of their longitudinal axis. Adjustability in the transverse direction will normally be achieved through slotted holes in the attached brackets. When post-installed anchors are installed with a normal hammer drill, reinforcement bars at the location of the anchor will restrain the installation. It is common practice to drill a second hole or use a core drill technique. With core drills, reinforcement and tendons in the concrete member can be damaged or completely destroyed during the installation of the anchor. For safety critical applications and post tensioned concrete members, core drilling is not recommended. Cast in anchors, especially anchor channels, offer a safe connection for safety critical applications while still providing sufficient adjustability. All commonly used concrete anchors are manufactured from steel and are thus subject to corrosion. Concrete anchors are available in different finishes. Carbon steel anchors are protected by coatings like zinc coating or hot dip galvanizing. Anchors that are manufactured from stainless steel do not require any coating to resist corrosion. Post-installed systems, anchor channels and threaded inserts are normally protected against corrosion and do not need any additional finish on the job site. As weld plates require additional welding on site, they will require corrosion protection on site after the welding is finished. This needs to be considered in the planning. Coated finishes are limited in their lifespan and require maintenance after a certain time of exposure. 
The durability depends on the type of coating and the environment. Engineers should consider the use of stainless steel anchors for all applications where the condition of the anchor cannot easily be checked and maintenance is impossible or requires a great effort, for example most facade connections. There are numerous grades of stainless steel available, the most common for anchors being AISA 316 and 304. The durability of steel products is governed by the environment which they are exposed to. The corrosion severity of the environment is influenced by the following factors. Humidity, temperature, salt, contract with other metals, industrial pollution and time of exposure. The Australian standard AS4312 atmospheric corrosivity zones in Australia define six categories. The Australian standard is based on the ISO standard ISO 9223. The level of corrosion protection that is required depends on the area the anchor is used in. AS4312 and ISO 9223 define five categories from C1 for dry environments up to C5 for severe surf shorelines. AS4312 also describes the category CX which is for regions very close to the surf shore with extremely high salt deposition. With higher category classes, the exposure for the anchor will get more severe and the time to the first maintenance will decrease. The sample map shows examples for the most common corrosivity zones according to AS4312 and the typical distance from the coast to which they extend. For areas close to the salt water, the level of corrosivity is depending on the surf and will be less severe around sheltered bays compared to rough sea. For more information on this topic, please visit the website of the Galvanizers Association of Australia www.gaa.com.au and download their advisory note number 39. Australian standard ASNZS 2312.2 guide to the protection of structural steel against atmospheric corrosion by the use of protective coatings, hot dip galvanizing, gives guidance about the expected lifespan of hot dip galvanized items depending on the coating thickness and the corrosivity category it is exposed to. The graph by the Galvanizers Association of Australia gives an overview over the durability of hot dip galvanizing in, in different exposures. Most fasteners depend on threads to introduce the load into the steel, which limits the thickness of the coating that can be applied to ensure the functionality of the connection. The thickness for hot dip galvanizing varies from 50 to 70 microns for normal applications which will provide a coating life of 25 to 50 years for applications in coastal areas. The designer should consider the design life of the building when he decides on the method of protection for his application. When the repetitive maintenance costs for the renewal of the corrosion protection is considered, stainless steel anchors are often the more economical solution. Cracking in concrete has a significant influence on the capacity of anchors as it changes the load path significantly. When post installed anchors or cast in anchors are installed in uncracked concrete, the pressure forces, which are shown in the image as blue arrows, will act from the head of the anchor toward the surface of the concrete and create a rotational symmetric distribution. Tensile hoop stresses, shown as a ring of red arrows in the concrete, will react to the pressure load and create a ring of tension loads that are taken over by the concrete tensile capacity. When the concrete is cracked, like shown on the image of the on the right, the transfer of the tensile hoop stresses is interrupted and the load distribution will change. All types of anchors, including the headed casting inserts, will show a reduction in their capacity when used in, con in cracked concrete. Casting inserts that are headed anchors generally show a smaller decrease in capacity compared to most post-installed systems. It is important for the planner to understand the behavior of the chosen fastener in cracked concrete. Some post-installed anchors are not recommended for the use in cracked concrete at all. All anchors show reduced capacities in cracked concrete. For headed anchors, the capacity is reduced by 10 to 30% to compare to the capacity in uncracked concrete. For post-installed anchors, the reduction is much higher. 
The two graphs show typical load displacement curves for drop-in anchors and bonded anchors. Mechanical anchors should be pre-qualified for the use in cracked concrete if they have to be used in this condition. For anchors that are approved through a European Technical Approval ETA, the ETL will list allowed conditions. The assessment for the anchors includes testing in cracks up to a crack width of 0.3 mm. The ETA refers to option 7 for uncracked concrete and option 1 for crack concrete. Typical bonded anchors show a load reduction of approximately 50% when used in cracked concrete. As the image shows, the crack will destroy the bond between the resin and the concrete around half the contact zone when the anchor is loaded, located in a crack reducing the capacity by around 50%. There are special bond systems available that react less critical to cracking. If the designer cannot be sure that the concrete that the anchor will be placed in is under pressure load in all directions over the entire lifespan of the construction, an anchor suitable for use in cracked concrete should be used. Connections to the bottom of the concrete slab should always be considered as cracked concrete. The assessment of the fastener should specifically mention that the anchor is suitable for cracked concrete, otherwise the fastener should not be used in this application. Even anchors that are suitable for the use in cracked concrete will have reduced capacities and conditions that require anchorage to cracked concrete. The designer needs to apply the right factors in the calculation. Design, qualification and installation of anchors is safety critical. The engineer should have a good understanding of the conditions and the product that is used to anchor to concrete. Based on the conditions and location, different type of anchors are best suited. As they are using headed anchors, cast in anchors are a safe and easy way to anchor in concrete, but as they have to be installed when the concrete is poured, planning is required to ensure the anchors are installed at the required locations. For cast in anchors, it is important to consider the required tolerances. To ensure reliable fastening, a proper cooperation between producer, engineer and installer is required. For more information on the topic anchorage to concrete and recommendations on the use of concrete anchors in Australia, please visit the website of the Australian Engineered Fasteners and Anchors Council, AFAC. AFAC offers a variety of documents with information on anchorage in concrete and a frequently asked questions area. For more background information on the design on concrete anchors and information on the CCD design method that is the basis of international standards in Europe, the US and Australia, please refer to the book Anchorage in Concrete Construction by Eligerhausen, Malé and Silva.